you said treasonous was a joke. But what about un-American? Um, in Washington, over the years with the State of the Union, one side, be it if it's a Democratic president, the Republicans sit. If it's a Democratic president, well, whatever, you, you get it. Um, if it's a Democratic president, the Republicans sit. If it's a Republican president, the Democrats sit. What is so un-American about this, this year, after this, been, this has been going on for all of these years? I think it's um, un-American not to be excited about the fact that people, uh, more people in this country have jobs than they did before, the fact that more people in this country have higher wages than they did before, the fact that the economy is booming like it wasn't before, the fact that ISIS is being crushed like it wasn't before. These are things that I don't care what party you're from. These are things that every American should be excited about and be able to celebrate. Rate, but he was specifically at that moment when he was in Cincinnati talking about the black unemployment rate. And that's something everybody should be excited about. From 6.8 But it's lower than it was, guys. It's progress. But it's still we should be still excited higher. about the it's fact that we're making progress. But it's that still things are better today than they were a year ago. That is something that we should be uh, excited about. That is something that we should be celebrating. It's not perfect. He didn't say it was perfect. He said we've made progress. He said things are better. The fact that any time the day before uh, Americans' lives are improving, that's a good thing that we should all be excited about, that we should all celebrate. Jim. Can I get back to uh, the Chief of Staff uh, saying that some of the Dreamers may just have been too lazy to get off their asses? Uh, just on the face of it, isn't that just a wildly offensive comment about these undocumented immigrants who are waiting for some kind of solution to come out of the city? Look, the only person that's actually offered a solution is this administration. The president's been a champion of giving 1.8 million DACA recipients and DACA eligible people a pathway to citizenship, and he's laid out a plan and a solution that actually addresses both Republicans and Democrats' concerns. Uh, I, I think it's hard to argue well, with that. On the surface of that, sir, David, though, isn't it just a? It's just an offensive comment, though, isn't it? Just on its surface. Uh, I, I think that's something it's, you would have to decide for yourself. Thanks a lot, Sarah. The president on the Republican memo says that it completely vindicates him. And this weekend we heard from Trey Gowdy, who is on the Intelligence Committee, who had a large part in writing that uh, memo. In what way does the president believe that the Republican memo vindicates him? Look, the president has uh, consistently called the Russia investigation politically motivated witch hunt uh, for the last year, and the memo clearly vindicates the president's position that there was political bias uh, in this process. It's pretty simple. So, Major? Senator Flake said something about the Senate floor just a minute. I want to give you a chance to respond. He said, and I quote, Sure, this will be eventful. I have seen the president's most ardent defenders use the now weary argument that the president's comments were meant as a joke just sarcasm, only tongue-in-cheek, but treason is not a punchline. Can you say for the sake of the future that you agree with Senator Flake on that, that treason or treasonous is not a punchline, is not a joking matter? Look, the, uh, honestly, I'm not going to respond directly to uh, Senator Flake's comments. Uh, I don't really care what Senator Flake has to say. I don't think his constituents do either, and I think that's why his numbers are in the take. Uh, the president was clearly joking with his comments, but what isn't a joke is that Democrats refuse to celebrate the accomplishments of last year that has helped all Americans. What I don't understand and what I don't think the country understands is why Democrats are so upset about lower taxes and higher wages. That's something that every American should be celebrating, not crying about, not sitting on their hands for. Democrats Democrats are going to have to make a decision at some point really soon. Do they hate this president more than they love this country? And I hope the answer to that is no. Sarah, Sarah on the president's uh, shutdown comments a few minutes ago, a, a few weeks ago he said that a shutdown would be devastating to the military. Does he now feel that uh, a, a shutdown would be worth it even if members of the U.S. military were negatively impacted? Look, uh, the only people that have caused a shutdown uh, are the Democrats who have repeatedly held the government hostage over their own politics. Democrats actually shut the government down. Let's not forget that just a couple weeks ago. The president isn't looking for this, but if the P Democrat Party is going to continue to threaten a shutdown because they won't include responsible immigration reforms, including fixing MS-13 loopholes and other issues, then the president welcomes that fight. Uh, it's a fight we won last time, and it's one we're very confident that we would win again. But let me repeat, our goal is to get a two-year budget deal and to also get a deal on immigration, which we have laid out, the president has generously laid out a plan that addresses both Republicans and Democrats' concerns, and we're hopeful we'll come to an agreement on both of those fronts. But isn't the president encouraging a shutdown here? 
Uh, the president's encouraging people to do their jobs. The president's encouraging them to get a deal on the budget, as he's laid out, a two-year, a long-term budget deal that actually helps our military uh, instead of doing these short-term deals. That's what he's advocated for all along. And the president is encouraging them to do their jobs and come to an agreement on immigration, particularly the four places that he's outlined that have to happen in any piece of legislation. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah uh, what did the president make of the stock market's volatility yesterday and today? And does he have any regrets about taking uh, responsibility or credit for the stock market's rise? Look, the economy is incredibly strong right now. The president's focus uh, continues to be on the long-term economic fundamentals, which like I just said, are very strong in this country. Uh, we're infinitely better off today than where we were before the president took office, particularly on the economy. We have historically low unemployment, and we actually have increasing wages for American workers. There's nothing that's taken place over the last couple of days in our economy that's fundamentally different than it was two weeks ago, and we're very comfortable with where we are right now. Sarah, does, he any, does he have any second thoughts about taking credit for it when the stock market goes up. Does the president have second thoughts about taking credit for a booming economy? Absolutely not. Jordan. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, has the president had a chance to review the memo from the Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee, and is he inclined to release it? Uh, the president has seen the memo. Uh, he met with the Deputy Attorney General uh, Rod Rosenstein within the last hour to discuss some of the differences between the two memos. Uh, and we are undergoing the exact same process that we did with the previous memo in which it will go through a full and thorough legal and national security review. We're in the middle of that process. When that's completed, uh, the president will be given a thorough briefing on uh, the findings of the different organizations and stakeholders that are involved, and we'll make a determination at that time. The review concluded last time the president had made it clear to lawmakers that he was inclined to release the Republican memo. Has he made any kind of similar comments to you guys about the Democratic memo? The president made the comment that we're going to go through the same process that we went through the first time, and that'll take several days to complete as it did the first time, and we'll make a determination at that point. Sarah, John. Uh, Sarah, also at the Capitol Hill today, uh, Chief of Staff Kelly said that he didn't think the president would be likely to extend the DACA deadline for March 5th. Uh, but twice in Davos, the president said, uh, if we need a little more time, we'll take a little more time on DACA. And, uh, and then in a gaggle, when asked if he would extend the deadline, he said, yeah, I might do that. I might do that, not guaranteeing it, but I certainly have the right to do that if I want. So which is it? Is he still open to the idea of extending the deadline? He certainly has the right to do so. Again, we're hopeful that we're going to get uh, to a deal. We've laid out a very generous offer that uh, meets all of the demands that the Democrats have. In fact, it goes above and beyond what they asked for. Uh, and it includes mostly everything else that is part of the pillars that we have laid out are things that Democrats have voted for. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer, all of these individuals have voted for the majority of the priorities that we've laid out in this legislation in the past, except we've actually gone further on the DACA component than Obama ever offered. And so the fact that we can't get to a deal, that's a question, frankly, that Democrats should be asked, like, what are you not supportive of in this legislation and why are we not moving the ball forward and actually solving the problem? Can clarify, is he, open, is he open to extending the deadline or, or has that door closed? Look, I'm not going to get ahead of the process. We're still hopeful we're going to get there but before the deadline hits. Sir, yeah. As it related to the Republican memo, the President and this White House argued it was important to release it for the sake of transparency. So therefore, can the American people expect to see the Democratic memo for the sake of transparency? I think the American people can expect this memo to go through the exact same process that the Republican memo went through, uh, which involves bringing all of the stakeholders from a legal and a national security perspective to weigh in before making a determination. But We're in the middle of that process. We're not going to get in prior to releasing the Republican memo. So why not the same? We didn't release the memo prior to that review process being complete. We didn't release the memo prior to the review process being complete, and we're not going to do that this time. Well, yeah. about John Kelly and his comments? Ref calling dreamers, indicating some of them are lazy. Does that type of rhetoric help get a bipartisan deal done? Look, like I said, the president and the administration were focused on actually solving this problem, not kicking it down the road, and we're going to continue to have those conversations. John? Um, quick question. Uh, there have been numerous published reports that Dave Bowditch, number three in the FBI, will be moved up to be deputy director under Director Ray. 
uh, he received both his present appointment and his previous position as head of the Los Angeles office of the FBI uh, under former director Comey. Given the administration's almost contumacious criticism of Mr. Comey, uh, is, there, is there going to be any objection to Mr. Bowditch moving up to the number two spot under Director Ray? Uh, look, I don't have any personnel announcements on that front, but you definitely win the award for best and biggest word used in the briefing. Thanks, guys.